Hello everybody, welcome back to the latest edition of Nanny Coke Newsroom with Bob Kalinuski here from Office USA and Nanny Coke alongside my co-host Jack the Cat already on set and not baited, no treats again, just sitting there on cue to be my co-host, not baited at all. Again, four days in a row people, so enough, no more busting me. Anyhow, today was one of those beautiful days, a day that reminds you of summer, a day that's amazing from morning till now and gonna be till sunset. Just one of those days that remind you of summer. Um, and if you need a reminder, guess what's coming up on Monday? Memorial Day. So Easter snuck up on us. I don't think some people forgot it was like right here about to happen within a day or two. Same thing with another American, fine American holiday, Cinco de Mayo. It came and went and uh, we almost forgot that it came. Some people didn't even know till the 5th. So this is your warning. Memorial Day is Monday. And um, maybe there's going to be less gatherings this year, um, maybe not as many cookouts and stuff, um, but the day is still no less meaningful just because we're quarantined, and um, if you have nothing to do, um, and if you've never done it before, a Memorial Day is a great day to go walk through a cemetery and reflect, and you know, look at some of the people who served our nation, who lost their lives in defense of this great nation. Um, uh, yesterday's show was about my little trek through a cemetery with the Boy Scouts and um, I ended up finding myself at a cemetery again today for an upcoming Memorial Day story. Uh, we'll just say I met with a mother, a Gold Star mother, and two um, of her daughters. Uh, they spoke about losing a loved one in a conflict, a war, uh, more than a decade ago. Um, and what this Memorial Day under quarantine means to them. So look out for that in the next couple days in the Citizen's Voice. Um, and there were some more remembrances going on today. Um, uh, you might have saw the obituary of the paper for the young man, uh, Jake Bush, who died in the car crash in Dallas, the 2019 Wyoming area grad, uh, Jake Bush. Um, today, uh, but they didn't have any calling hours or funeral uh, information in the obituaries, like none really have anymore right now because a lot of things are doing, you know, having private ceremonies or very small ceremonies or very small wakes. Um, there was a lot of young men and women who were definitely go seen going in and out of the funeral home today. Um, so, you know, the family got to see how much Jake was loved, um, despite what's going on with quarantine. Uh, I don't think, you know, if that was my best friend, um, I, I would certainly want to make sure I'm sending that person out in style uh, it, with the love and support that they deserve, even with quarantine going on. I mean, how, I don't know how you could deprive the kids of the right of walking in that funeral home, and they didn't. Uh, they streamed in and streamed out. I think everyone tried to be social uh, distant, and um, you know, but they they wanted to be there to say a final farewell to their friend. Um, at one point, there was a Pennsylvania State Police cruiser parked outside the funeral home. I think that was a personal friend of the family who came to pay his respects. Uh, but that was very fitting because this young man wanted to be a state trooper and uh, state tr police were there at, at his wake, um, at least for a little while. So, the big news of the day in the paper. Booze to go. Mixed alcoholic drinks to go from your favorite neighborhood bar. Um, that's kind of an odd thing that the state uh, passed during this time. That Of all the things you could do to help uh, the small business owners and restaurants at this time, uh, the alcoholic drinks to go is kind of... An odd one, but uh, it seems to have some consensus. Um, I'm wondering, is it a great idea? I think I read Denise's story today in the Citizen's Voice. How, well, even though you get it to go, it has to have like a, a secured lid, and there has to be a secured thing over the uh, the straw uh, hole, and it has to be in the back seat, and it can't be near a passenger. Like I don't know. Once it leaves that bar's hands uh, to the customer's hands. I don't know how many people are going to be thrown in the back seat. I guarantee it's going right in the cup holder. I'm not saying they're going to drink it. Another thing is, is it, is it economical? Um, you could go buy a, 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 the liquor stores are open right now, and even in Denise's stories, couple, uh, one bar owner said, "I wish they would have did this while the liquor stores were closed uh, indefinitely." Because uh, now you can just get your own bottle of liquor at home. It's going to be cheaper than um, what your neighborhood bar is going to charge. But maybe some of you want to support your neighborhood bar, and maybe some of the neighborhood bars make drinks way better than you can. Uh, so no judgment here. Um, I know the R Bar in uh, Nanny Coke, Newport, said they are going to be doing it. And I know that they have a loyal following, so I'm sure they're going to be slinging a lot of booze to go. Um, especially Bloody Mary's. I think that's what they promoted today. 
Um, so an update on Sophie. Yesterday we started a trend on, on Facebook. Where is Sophie? Hashtag. Uh, during my trip to the cemetery yesterday, I saw a lady who, you know, her tombstone was there. The Baldigo uh, tombstone. And one, it said Sophie, 1910 hyphen, and nothing after it. Then we found out last night through a lot of research, Frank, the person next to her, was the husband. So Frank died in 1955. Sophie didn't say anything, so there's only two other options. Sophie was buried there, and they never fixed, or three. Sophie was buried there, and they didn't put a date in. Sophie uh, is still alive at age 110, or Sophie's buried somewhere else. So through a lot of research, we found out. Sophie remarried after Frank died in 1955. Um, Sophie's new husband died in 1970. And then was buried in Nanny Coke Cemetery, which is the cemetery right next door to the one where her plot was to be. And then Sophie died in 2001, a couple days before 9-11. And she was buried in the, the next to her second husband in Nanny Coke Cemetery. So I guess that's why they never etched in the tombstone. Uh, I think it's St. Mary's or St. Stanislaus Cemetery. Um, because she's not buried there. and But the, she still has a tombstone there. So Jack the Cat feature today, very quick. He, as soon as I rolled over on my stomach today, we heard this before, but this one's a good picture of it. The moment you wake up and you roll in your stomach for like a second to like say, what day is it? What do I have to do today? Boom! Jumps on me. Big, that's a big monster 200 or 22 pound cat doing that. Well, well, you sleeping? Okay, the old photo of the day. Here's a picture of my car on a desolate road in near Beaufort, South Carolina, one of my favorite places on earth. Underneath a southern live oak tree. Um, these trees are awesome because they grow in all kinds of weird, uh, crooked ways all over the place. And then they're adorned with Spanish moss. Um, I think it's like a, a kind of innocuous fungus and it actually looks very nice. It's like a little sleepy, sleepy little thing on the tree. Uh, it really gives the trees character, so that's uh, the old photo of the day. The laugh, smile, and cry feature of the day is a smile because I got mail today again. I like getting packages, so that made me smile. But this one I know who it's from, and it's, I'm sure it's going to be very like respectful and stuff because it's from my good friend, Lieutenant Colonel James Harvey, Harvey from Colorado, one of the famous Tuskegee Airmen of World War II. Um, Age 95, he visited last year. We featured a segment on, of him on the show a couple weeks ago. We did a story about him in the Citizen's Voice, how he could, he wanted to come back for Lieutenant Colonel James Harvey Day in Luzerne County um, and couldn't because of coronavirus. He wants to come back next year. His, him and his son-in-law said they were sending me a gift, and this is from them. I saw the return address already. So getting a gift from a 95-year-old World War II veteran and his son-in-law... It's going to be awesome, especially with Memorial Day approaching. So, we got business cards, two business cards of Lieutenant Colonel James Harvey, the first Top Gun. He was a fighter pilot, one of the famous Tuskegee Airmen. Hmm, and we got some photos. Bob, wishing you the best, autograph photo of, of, a Citizen's Voice photo, an autograph photo of Lieutenant Colonel James Harvey, wishing me the best, first top gun, that's from his visit last year, autograph photo from a hero, that is pretty awesome, um, Bob, wishing you the best, another photo, Bob, thank you. Another photo. Thank you, Bob. Lieutenant Colonel Harvey again. Just some autograph photos. I'll never forget. Um, he's kind of a big deal. Like he has his own like brochure and all of his accomplishments. And I think this is the the big the big one. All right, I guess that's like the, I think that's like the medal for the Tuskegee Airmen, like a medal. I'm going to put that on my bookshelf right there of the, some of the most important things in my life. And then we'll uh, send Lieutenant Colonel Harvey and Ron a big thank you for the medal of the research that medal. 
So, how do we top that? Well, we top it with the Cliff Lewis Random Act of Kindness Award for today. And speaking of old people, I love old people. A uh, young lady there turned 102 years old today, or where? At the Meadows Nursing Home in Dallas, uh, turned 102 years old today. So what did the good people of the Back Mountain do? They gave her a birthday parade for her 102nd birthday at the Meadows. And here's a little video of it before we close it out, the show out. But first, we gotta get Jack off here. Come on, get up, get up. Anna's closing out the show. Anna, take her away. Stay safe out there. <laughs>